I haven't been here in a while. <sighs> the title of this video will make sense in a few minutes. So it's from 70s. Some of the 70s, some of the 70s. Interesting. <laughs> was completed March 31st, 1897. 1897. <laughs> Thank you. 
Music Without Borders. In the beginning, I told people that this will make sense in a few minutes in this video. I stole this phrase from you. When you asked me how would I describe my program in one sentence or in one phrase, and I said Music Without Borders. Welcome to my video, Sven Helbig. How shall I introduce you? You're many things. The best thing or the thing I would say about myself is I'm a musician doing different things. But you right. are also the curator slash host of this concert. People are about to see me prepare myself for it. So I thought it would be nice to have you explain a bit of this concert. People um, know that we are after the concert, right? And you are in New York and I'm in Dresden and we talk after the concert about what yes. was actually going yeah, on. Yeah, because I think it's just better coming from you directly than me trying to paraphrase what you say. I was asking you about Schöne Turner, about this radio concert, a very unique concert where it's really music without borders. So can you explain Schöne Turner? I was thinking back how I discovered music. Why is the, the mix of genres in my head? And I never thought about genres, actually. I mentioned Eisenhüttenstadt because I was not born into a specific classical scene. And I was born in a city where those scenes didn't even exist, without any concert hall, without any theater. And I was very young. I was discovering, discovering music actually in this little radio. I have it here from my grandfather from the 60s. All the music that came out of this one station I could receive was just music, was just sound. And since I haven't seen people going to a concert in a suit, all the social connotation you know, was not happening. I didn't see people in a club. We did not have a blues scene, a classical scene, a dark wave scene. There was no scene. And because it was so small, that town, and music was just a sound, no matter when it was composed. And I didn't even know. That's not a guarantee that you would forever love all types of music. But for me, this was probably a reason why it started in, in that mix. It makes perfect sense. And somehow I kept this feeling of this, this very early radio feeling. And I wanted to transport this into my radio show. And I do this. And after the people reacted so wonderfully to it and loved it, I thought, OK, why not trying this on stage? Because on stage, it's very different. Why is this important to you? It's important to me because my life started like this and then I have the feeling that the walls have been built by the grown-ups and I didn't want that. They started <laughs> sorting music by letter, by instrument, by age, by country, by something. And when I was a child, that those walls didn't exist. And I don't want to grow up. Maybe that's why. <laughs> that's a great answer. That's a great answer. And a lot of people are on the young side from my audience, so they will probably appreciate this. So what made you pick piano, cello, orchestra, and of course your electronics? How did you pick those particular instrumentation for this concert? You have a pure classical background, I know. And how do you feel on stage with the electronics and everything? Do you think it makes any sense? No. No, okay. And um, <laughs> not at all, okay.